In this video, we are going to talk about everything you need to know about yield farming. So before starting this video, please like this video, and subscribe to our channel for the future updates. At its most basic level, yield farming is a method of allowing cryptocurrency holders to lock up their holdings in exchange for rewards. It's a mechanism that allows you to gain fixed or variable interest by investing cryptocurrency in a DeFi sector. Simply put, yield farming is the practice of lending cryptocurrency to others through the Ethereum network. The sum lent out is repaid with interest as loans are made by banks using fiat money. The idea is the same with yield farming. Cryptocurrency that would otherwise be sitting in an exchange or wallet is lent out via DeFi protocols, or locked into smart contracts in Ethereum terms, to earn a profit. Yield farming is usually done on Ethereum with ERC-20 tokens, and the rewards are often ERC-20 tokens. Although this could change in the future, the Ethereum ecosystem currently houses almost all yield farming transactions. Let's start. Number 10. How does yield farming work? Adding funds to a liquidity pool, which are basically smart contracts that hold funds, is the first step in yield farming. These pools provide the foundation for a platform where users can trade, borrow, and lend tokens. You've legally become a liquidity provider if you've applied your funds to a pool. You'll be rewarded with fees provided by the underlying DeFi platform in exchange for locking up your fines in the pool. It's important to note that yield farming does not include things like investing in ETH. Yield farming is the practice of lending out ETH on a decentralized non-custodial money market protocol like Aave and then collecting a reward. People often transfer their funds between various protocols to chase higher yields, and reward tokens can be deposited in liquidity pools as well. It's a complicated situation. Yield farmers are also very familiar with the Ethereum network and its intricacies, and will transfer their funds between DeFi platforms to maximize their returns. It's not easy, and it's definitely not easy money. Those that provide liquidity are paid based on the amount of liquidity they provide, so those who reap large incentives have correspondingly large sums of money. Number 9. A quick rundown of yield farming. Funds are deposited into a liquidity pool by liquidity providers. Deposited funds are usually USD-linked stablecoins like DAI, USDT, USDC, and others. Another reason to contribute money to a pool is to collect a token that isn't traded publicly or has a low volume by adding liquidity to a pool that rewards it. Your returns are determined by the sum you spend as well as the protocol's rules. By reinvesting your reward tokens into other liquidity pools, which in turn provide various reward tokens, you can build complex investment chains. Number 8. What's so special about yield farming? To put it simply, the main advantage of yield farming is sweet, sweet profit. For example, if you arrive early enough to embrace a new project, you will be able to generate token rewards that rapidly increase in value. You will either spend the money or reinvest it if you sell the incentives for a profit. Yield farming can currently offer more lucrative interest than a conventional bank, but there are risks involved as well. Interest rates are unpredictable, making it difficult to predict what the rewards will be in the coming year to say nothing of the fact that DeFi is a riskier market in which to invest. Number 7. Why should we care? Since yield farming platforms are based on Ethereum, a staggering amount of money will be made, and lost, over the course of 2020. The Ethereum framework is used by most, if not all, DeFi software. The meteoric rise in popularity demonstrates how much the DeFi promised financial transition is dependent on Ethereum, a relatively new network. Yield farming is relevant because it can assist projects in obtaining initial liquidity, but it is also beneficial to both lenders and borrowers. It simplifies the process of taking out loans for all. Those that make big profits usually have a lot of money behind them. Those looking for a loan, on the other hand, have access to cryptocurrencies with extremely low interest rates as low as 1% APR in some cases. Borrowers can also easily deposit the funds in a high interest account. Though the yield farming explosion has died down somewhat following its summer 2020 boom, there is still the prospect of receiving an outsized yield on assets relative to that seen in the world of conventional finance. Number 6. Which projects are involved? Yield farming is currently being pursued by a range of DeFi ventures. Aave, a project that allows users to lend and borrow a variety of cryptocurrencies, is currently the largest in terms of value locked into smart contracts. Next up is Yearn. 
Finance, which aims to get the best interest rates by moving users' funds between various lending then there's Compound, a DeFi network that allows users to benefit from their crypto savings. Number 5. Who can get involved? If you have no prior experience in the crypto world, getting interested in yield farming can be difficult. Compound and Yearn. Finance are two projects aiming to make the world of borrowing and lending more available to everyone. However, since yield farming has resulted in high gas fees on the Ethereum network, those making large returns from lending their crypto are usually those with a large amount of capital to begin with. Number 4. What can you do with yield farming? Using a variety of techniques, top yield farmers have received as much as 100% APR on common stablecoins. Compound, one of the most common DeFi platforms in the world, is one of the strategies. Investors are rewarded with comp tokens for both providing and borrowing resources, and many users take advantage of this by doing both. Borrowing money on Compound earns you comp token as a reward. The more comp token you borrow, the more comp token you get. You will keep borrowing to farm the cashback incentives if the cashback is worth more than the expense of the borrowing fees. Since liquidity miners are paid for both lending and investing, one strategy is to lend the asset with the highest interest rate, invest as much as possible with the tokens, and then return the rest of the assets to the lending pool. The potential end result is a 100% annual percentage yield APY, instead of the 0.01% to 1.00% offered by most banks, which is a significant improvement. Number 3. Is yield farming sustainable? Certain yield farming projects, according to a number of Ethereum developers, will not last and are simply not viable. These ventures often collect large sums of money in a short period of time and then fade away. Some, especially the flash farming ventures, have been labeled as scams. Some experiments in yield farming have used experimental and unaudited code, which has resulted in unintended consequences. The general consensus among experts is to invest at your own risk. However, DeFi yield farming platforms such as those mentioned above will continue to exist for a long time. Maybe not as much money will be made on them in the future, but the landscape of loans will be changed. Number 2. The future of yield farming. In such a fast-paced, volatile environment, it's almost impossible to reliably predict the future. However, the general consensus is that the lucrative bubble will eventually burst. The current levels of hype and expectation can put too much pressure on the network, resulting in congestion issues. Any price corrections that result could leave some farmers unable to liquidate their holdings, which could have a negative impact on overall yield farming trust. For the time being, yield farming remains a high risk, high reward activity that could be worth pursuing if the requisite studies and risk assessments are completed ahead of time. Number 1. How are yield farming returns calculated? In most cases, the average yield farming returns are annualized. This calculates the potential returns over the course of a year. Annual percentage rate, APR, and annual percentage yield, APY, are two widely used metrics, APY. The distinction between them is that APR does not take compounding into account, while APY does. In this case, compounding refers to the act of reinvesting earnings to produce higher returns. However, keep in mind that the terms annual percentage rate, APR, and annual percentage yield, APY, are also used interchangeably. It's also important to remember that these are all estimates and forecasts. And short-term incentives are difficult to predict precisely. What is the reason for this? Yield farming is a highly competitive and fast-paced industry with rapidly fluctuating rewards. If a yield farming strategy works for a while, a lot of farmers will take advantage of it, and it will eventually stop producing high returns. DeFi may need to develop its own metrics for measuring returns because APR and APY are legacy market metrics. Weekly or even daily estimated returns can make more sense due to the quick pace of DeFi. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.